So did you know that using use reducer is so much better compared to use state? And actually a lot of developers are claiming that using use reducer helps them build and write so much better code compared to use state. For example, I bought this really simple shopping cart in here with cart items where you can add in here with the increasing counts and you can add like different stuff in here. And this is actually what it looks like to use use state to build that shopping cart with all this jargon in here. And in the other hand, this is actually what it looks like to use only use reducer with so much simpler and straightforward code. So use reducer in here is another react hook that actually handles complicated states and can be used instead of using use state. It simply just takes a reducer and initial arguments in here and an optional initializer function. And simply in here, it returns a dispatch so you can send any events you want and returns the current state. So you can imagine this reducer is basically the same thing as Redux or how Redux works because Redux actually relies a lot on reducers to actually put one consolidated store that has all the reducers together. So it kind of like has the same thing, just Redux in here has a lot more features, but this it's like the simplest implementation that you can use right into React without so many complex setups or stuff or installations, you can easily get through and use reuse reducer in here with this hook. And if you jump to the documentation in here about extracting state logic into a reducer, like when it comes to react, it simply just states in here that a component with many state updates spreads across many event handlers can get super overwhelming. So for that particular thing, you can actually consolidate all the state update logic outside your component into a single function. And that single function is called a reducer. So to better understand use reducer and what is an actual reducer function. So simply in here, we got this very simple component in here, which is a text editor that renders a simple text area with a paragraph in here to display the number of characters that we have actually input on this text area and a button in here to click completely clear the text area text. So it looks something like this. You can just input whatever in here. It tells you the character counts in here, like oh, 13, whatever. If we click on the clear in here, it just clears everything out. So for this one particularly, we're actually using use reducer. We're giving it a reducer that we created and we're giving it some initial state. Now, if you look into the reducer, as I said before, it's a simple function and that's exactly what it is in here. So it takes like the state that is, you know, the current state of the component and it takes the action in here that could be received from the dispatch and simply returns a brand new state. So in here, basically like most of the times, 99% of the times, reducers are used with switch in here, but of course you can use them with if statements or however you would like, but most of the times they're gonna be used with switch in here on the action type because each action in here should have a type property in here that determines what the action does. For example, in here, the action type for this is to set a text. That means just to populate text on the text area in here on the state, or maybe for this one to clear text. So simply in here, if you notice every single time it returns a new object, so like immutability is, is very important. So it returns a new objects in here with the previous state, then it actually updates the new properties like text. It says it as an action dot payload and the length in here, for example, I mean, just, just a simple example, but you can completely avoid that one. The same thing in here for clearing the text in here, it says, oh, text should be cleared and length is zero in here. And for default, just returns the normal state with no changes. Now from the use reducer in here, actually returns for us an array, the same thing as use state, it returns a dispatch in here to actually dispatch whatever action you would like. It returns like the state of the current reducer. And now you can actually down here use the dispatch. So as I said before, dispatch is just you can dispatch whatever action you've got inside of the reducer in here. Simply just do dispatch in here, you're passing in objects and you can pass in like the type of the action. For example, we want to set a text and you're passing the payload in here as the value from the actual text area like events or events in here dot target dot value. And the same thing in here, for example, for the on click, we dispatch a clear text in here. So we tell it, oh, reducer, please, I want to just do our dispatch a clear text action, please do that and actually give me the new state right over here. And that's simply what a reducer is. Now, you're probably wondering why I just don't use normal use state right over here. And instead of that, just I go and use use reducer with a reducer and add a lot function and just makes it a little more complicated and it takes a little more time. Why would I do that? I mean, not all the scenarios needs from you to use your use reducer instead of a use state, but there are actually some scenarios where you need to handle complicated state or correlated state that is actually, you know, has values that depend on each other. For that case, using use reducer is way much more logical and better than using use state. 
But for instance, in here, let's say we've got this simple example in here, which is a color picker component that actually allows it to, you know, color pick, we've got a bunch of colors in here on this array. And I'm just using use state in here to keep track of the currently selected color, of course, because that's simple, we just select in one color, one value. So it's just going to be a normal use state with a string value in here, it has set select selected color and you know, the selected color in here, and we simply just set, you know, the value is going to be one of these colors. I mean, it's pretty simple, the state in here doesn't need a lot of stuff. Of course, the component might look a little complicated, because you've got a lot of GSX in here. But it's just, you know, whatever it's actually doing behind the scenes, pretty simple, it's just like rendering all the colors in here from the color array in here. And simply whenever you try to select it, just do set selected color, uh, like in here, for example, for clearing the selection, or maybe just, you know, set the, you know, handle like this color selector in here and just passing in, you know, the color you've got. And this is basically what a component looks like. So you can just go through the colors in here, select whatever color you want, and you just get the selected color displayed for you in here. If you want to clear the selection, you can do that. I mean, the state is pretty straightforward. Why would you use use reducer in that case? I mean, it doesn't make sense, right? It just you're making it overcomplicated and always keeping it simple, stupid is the best approach. Now let's go through a different example. Let's say we've got like a shopping cart in here for e commerce store or something, people can actually select from a variety of products like right on the top in here, you can just add to cart or whatever you want. And here down here, we got the cart items with total items in here going to be calculated the total price, and the user can go ahead and clear the cart. So for example, if I add the one plus open in here, you're going to have a oh, one plus open, this is actually the count, if you double click, you're going to have the count increases, as well as the price in here is being increased, for example, add a gigabyte in here motherboard, the same thing in here, the price increases the counts, I can increase the count from here, uh, same thing in here. So like, I can add a bunch of products in here, and as well, I can increase the counts like the number of or the quantity of that particular product that I want to buy. So something like that. But for instance, in here, if you just like, look a little more closer of how everything is connected in here, you're going to notice that Oh, all of these stuff are correlated, right? Because the products in here should have a quantity and should have a price attached to it. And um, like, for example, the total price in here is going to be dependent on the quantity of the product. And you know, like whatever products we've got inside of our cart in here. So there's actually a lot of factors and all of them are like dependent on each other. So this state is more of like correlated, right? So for that particular reason, I went through and actually used a use reducer instead of using use state. So for that, I'm just going to like, oh, use reducer, I'm using my shop reducer, which I've actually to make the code cleaner and separate the concerns and follow the single responsibility principle, I just went through and actually put that inside of like a different file that reducer, I created like a reducer file right over here, and he put it right over there for it. Okay. And the same thing for initial state. So in here, I get a dispatch and a state, I got a couple of like event handlers in here, for example, for adding items to cart, and all of them actually using dispatch with different type of actions, like, for example, add item, they pass in a payload, remove item, increase count, and clear cart. And of course, down here, got just the GSX, it might seem a little complicated, because I'm just putting everything in one single file, you shouldn't do that, just to do the single responsibility principle, but this is just the GSX, we're not going to be caring about that one, we only care about the reducer on top. Now, if you go and look into our shop reducer in here, there's actually our reducer, it's a normal function, we've got a switch in here with all the type of actions we've got, for example, adding an item in here. So we first goes actually and checks if it's actually an existing item. So he uses the state of find in here, if it's an existing item, he's going to add it to the state, but it's actually going to increase the count as Chris in here increases the count of the item because it's already there. So we just want to increase the count. And we also want to increase the total items in here and the total price. I mean, you can avoid actually doing the total items in here, but just doing it for just showing you guys that you know, the correlated state stuff. And for example, in here for removing an item or maybe increasing the count, I just clearly seen here the state is actually dependent on each other. Like for example, when you update the cart, you need to go ahead and actually update the total items because that one changed as well. And for that, you got to go ahead and actually update the total price because that one changed as well. And that actually depends, for example, on the previous total price, then you're going to find the items in here and check the price. And that will actually depend on the quantity in here of the actual, you know, cart products that were added, and yada, yada, yada. So like, all of this is correlated. And all of this like one property depends on another property. So like each time you want to increase the count or add a new product or update a product or remove a product, you have to go through these steps with updating the card and then updating the total items, then the total prices, maybe the quantity as well, a lot of stuff. And that's definitely a good example of when you should use a reducer instead of a normal use state.
Of course, you know, if you're just wondering what the action is, it's just a normal, you know, export type action here. I'm using TypeScript and it's just like, you know, a bunch of objects in here, mainly has a type and a payload, but you can actually do whatever you want. But this is basically what most people use because it's simple, straightforward, and it makes a lot of sense. And just to showcase like the usefulness of you know using a use reducer in that particular case versus if you would do it with use state, I mean it's possible with use state. I'm not saying it's bad or anything. It works well. You can do it, but actually hurts a lot of performance. As the React development documentation states, it's not just me. They are saying it too. So if you were to do it using use state, I just have to do you know three variables in here: one for cart, total items, and total price. And later on for the event, of course, event handlers in here, for example, when you try to add items to the cart, you got to do a lot of stuff in here and a lot of logic inside of the component itself. And if you look a little closer in here, so like whenever we try to update the cart, so we do set cards, then we immediately do set total items and set total price. I mean, all of those are actually going to trigger fins state changes, which is less optimized if you just use a reducer and actually just put one change through one object to everything. And of course, if you just go ahead and compare this component using use state to the reducer part in here, you're going to find this one just comparing it just visual in here. This is looking a lot simpler and a lot easier to know exactly what's happening. If you don't know like the details of the implementation, you can go to the reducer in here, look into it. But for the other one, it looks gigantic and a little more complicated. So anyway, guys, that was actually how on when you should use use reducer instead of use states and when you should not. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Catch you hopefully in the next ones.